uh, avoid taking as many penalties as they did in the first 40 minutes of play. Thank you, Isaac. Okay, we're going to introduce a contest we're doing here tonight. We want you fans tuning in on Ustream to send in your predictions via the Ustream social stream, via Twitter, Facebook, or to our email address, preferably the social stream, as that's the easiest for us to check. We would like you to predict who will be the first goal scorer here for the University of Oregon Ducks and who will get the first penalty for the Ducks. So if you predict both of those correctly, we will send you an Oregon Hockey t-shirt. So please stay tuned for that. I'll remind you again after the puck is dropped, but you can go ahead and start sending in your predictions for who will be the first University of Oregon goal scorer and who will get the first penalty. Will it be Michael Luke? Will it be Alex Sulitzer? They're used to it. Who knows? The odds on Michael Luke, I'd say probably even money. Worthy of noting tonight, we do have freshman Shabara back wearing the 36 sweater. He will be kick-starting this Oregon offense. It's a presence that's been missed. So. Yeah, it is. He's one of the top scorers for the Ducks, even though, as you say, he is only a freshman. And that's one thing when you look at the stats for these two teams that does jump out at you. Oregon has a much more deep roster in terms of where their production comes from. Washington has the big numbers. They have Minkoff and Corey James, numbers one and three nationally in the ACHA in Division Two in terms of both points and assists. But then there is a much deeper drop off and then Oregon you've got the Sully brothers they'll score a lot and Connor McBride will score a lot Nick Shabara scores a lot of goals a lot more players that uh, are able to put the puck in the back of the net with a little more frequency than the Huskies who have a bit more top heavy roster you might say and we've seen that with that top line the Corey James Ryan Minkoff line being the most productive so far for the Huskies. Introducing Shabara back into this lineup Isaac where do you think that he will slot in could he be a top six player will the coach send him down to the bottom six for today or well we, have, we do know the Ducks will be starting the same unit they did yesterday with Stephen Casey with uh, Stephen Casey and the Sully brothers I'd say you'll probably see Shabara slot into that second line I I think that third line has already been so great you don't really want to mess up their chemistry uh, we'll see what that what uh, Rich Salahor does in terms of that interesting note uh, Pat Scarlato ejected from last night's game will be playing today uh, often the case in the packet, it depends on if you're given a game misconduct or a disqualification. One of those two, you are knocked out of the next game as well. And I actually will apologize, I don't know the jargon, uh, the official terms as well, but whichever one allows you to play in the next game is what was written down on the score sheet for Scarlotta. At least that's what the referee told me after the game last night. All right, we are going to step aside as the national anthem is being sung. Uh, if we get audio problems figured out, we will be back shortly, but we will remain live on audio.
All right, fans, just moments away from the puck dropping. Cockrell is in goal for the Ducks. Gilmore in goal for the Huskies. That has been the storyline of this series starting last week up in Seattle Olympic View Arena and ending here tonight at the Lane County Ice Center in Eugene, Oregon. Blue skies here in Eugene. It was a nice spring-like day, although it is very wintry in Eugene still. Uh, here in the rink, it's pretty cold conditions up here in the broadcast booth, Isaac. Pretty cold conditions as it always is at the Lane County Ice Arena, a little bit colder uh, air temperature than it is even at the other rinks, some of the other rinks you might attend to, and that does have an effect on the ice quality at times. Been a little bit less glide to this ice, it can be a little harder, you get a little more bounces, and that's something you have to keep in mind. And as we're ready for the play-by-play, -play, I will send it back to Connor Gordon. And Alex Solitzer today in the center. Stephen Casey playing his part on the left wing, it seems, as he is lining up. Halverson with the puck, finally with a C on his sweater, by the way. He's wearing an A on his sweater most of the season, despite being the captain. Finally got that sewed on as the first shot on goal is deflected wide off of Minkoff. That was an Alex Solitzer effort. Stephen Casey behind the net. And centering puck gets broken up and cleared out by Washington. Minkoff now with speed tries to chip it around Taron Donnelly, who almost dumps Minkoff into the bench of the Oregon Ducks. What a way to start the game for Alex Sulitzer. Now, puck being fought over in the Oregon defensive zone. Minkoff still hovering in the area, exchanging some blows with Halverson. Halverson didn't seem too pleased about that. Now Huskies with some space to skate. This first five minutes of the game here, very important for Washington as they do trail 2-1 in the series. They'll ice the puck here. But when you trail 2-1 in the series as they do, this game obviously very important because they need the win and a shootout win tonight to reclaim the I-5 Cup. And if Oregon can jump out to a lead, it's going to be a much steeper mountain for Washington to climb. So they're going to come out and look for them to be the team with the edge in this first five minutes because it means that much more to them. And getting ready to take the face off for the Ducks is Dylan Abate against Ryan Minkoff, who's been out there so far for this entire first period. Long shift from the top line of the Huskies. There's junior Jesse Leonard, who we have been announcing as freshman Jesse Leonard, so we apologize for that. Wearing 23, Jesse is actually a junior here at the University of Oregon. Got corrected earlier by him. I must have watched the broadcast back and been like, hey, I'm older than that. And another interesting note that we said before the game, uh, if you weren't tuned in quite yet, Patrick Scarlato, who was given game misconduct yesterday, is back for this game. Uh, did not need to serve a one-game suspension, so the discrepancy between a disqualification and a game misconduct, Isaac and I are not sure, but whichever one of those he received, he is able to play today. Jesse Leonard now chips forward to McBride intercepted by Andrew Johnson and shipped forward back to Leonard. Leonard to, Bro to Brock Burgess, who is a freshman. Freshman and junior D pair, Burgess and Leonard. Leonard chips forward and almost out of the zone, but fell to the stick of Johnson, who chipped it back in. Working in front are Huskies, though, turned over to Trevor McCarty, who had the game winner yesterday right off of the faceoff with this line with McBride. McBride keeps it in. McCarty falls to his stick, chips it forward to Gasser. Gasser, though, sends it the length of the ice for the whistle, and we have icing. Isaac, familiar referee here for the Ducks, Kasparowski. He has been a referee for most of the season. We understand some of you may be having some quality issues with our broadcast. We are broadcasting in a little bit higher quality tonight in 1080 versus 720 last night. So if that keeps happening, we might be able to uh, go back to 720 and hopefully it'll be smoother like it was last night. So please let us know if you do have trouble. Keep us informed on the social stream or Twitter, Facebook, Gmail that we have been announcing. You can follow us at Twitter at Oregon underscore hockey. Gmail Oregon Club Hockey at gmail.com. Obviously, the social stream, you just need a free Ustream account. So let us know there. If we are having quality issues, we will decrease our quality down from 1080 to 720. That's usually a little clearer for you at home. So if it is becoming an issue, if we do lag out, please let us know and we will get that fixed straight away. Here come the Huskies. And the puck still in the Husky zone. A whistle now from the ref. We, we will. 
We've mentioned, by the way, those uh, photos we've asked you to submit. We're going to start sharing those in a little bit. Reminder, the rules, um, or just to let you know how those are going to work. If you are the parent that submitted that photo, go ahead and have your laugh, but don't tr don't make a guess. Don't spoil the fun for everybody else. And if it's not your child or your, uh, your skater and you want to make a guess as to maybe what little munchkin that is, uh, we can have some fun with that, and then we'll let you know. And Dan Solitzer now leaves the puck for Stephen Casey. Stephen Casey tries his silky hand moves to leave a pass for Alex Solitzer. Turned over, though. Minkoff now with the first opportunity tonight for the Huskies to flex high off the stick and into the netting. We will have a face-off in the Oregon defensive zone. A couple of opportunities so far for each team. Only one that's actually gotten through to a goaltender. That was a shot from the Ducks. So your official shot on goal count so far, just the one for Oregon and none yet for Washington with 17-24 left in the first. Taryn Donnelly for the Ducks behind the net under pressure from Corey James. Alex Solitzer looks to knock a little sense into Minkoff, who was up, or for James rather, who was up for the challenge. Sidestepped it. Great skating, and it's a goal! What a move from Stephen Casey, finished off by a Solitzer brother. I'm not sure which one, but that seemed to take a deflection in front before trickling off the pad of Gilmore and into the net. Second shot of the game for the Ducks. First goal, 1 0, 17 0 5 to go here in the first. Yeah, and that's a much better start for Oregon than we saw yesterday when they took penalty after penalty after penalty in the first period and now only their second shot on goal gets deflected in. We'll listen for the announcement to see who gets the credit for it. Say it. Stephen Casey credited for the goal. Tyler Halverson on the assist, 17.05 here to go. The clock is not starting. Here we go. Clock finally is starting. Matthew Ackman tips the puck forward to Jake Yale. Jake Yale with speed now down the right, waiting for his teammates to come in, throws it to the slot. There were three Huskies there waiting for the puck. Turned over, now the length of the ice. The puck goes to Tyler Halverson, called for icing. Isaac, floodgates opened a little bit quicker than they did in yesterday's game where one goal ended up being all that was needed. Ducks went away with the 1-0 victory. Something tells me that 1-0 won't do it here tonight. No, 1-0 is certainly not going to do it tonight. At least if you're a Washington fan, you'd hope so. But for Oregon, what a good start. If you can just get a goal to, you know, go into the, sec the first intermission with a two-goal lead, you can be that much more comfortable, that much more confident, and have take the stress a little bit out of the second and third periods of this game. We were uh, talking about how Shabara might slide into this lineup. It looks like he will be playing on the young line of Jake Yale and Matthew Ackman. Definitely one of the more talented skaters on that line. Shabara had a hot start to the season before succumbing to an illness that has kept him out for a while, but he is an elite scorer, and these freshmen he's playing with, with Matthew and Yale, they aren't too bad themselves. No, they're not, and there's a lot of there's a lot of try on this line. There's a lot of wanting to do well, and I think a presence like Shabara is going to really help out. And this is actually Nick Cool out there, not Jake Yale, I apologize. Nick Cool, Shabara, and Matthew Ackman is this line for the Ducks as Shabara goes for a change. M Ackman loses the puck inside his offensive zone. The puck's chipped forward by a Husky off the back of Kyle Umloff, who sends it deep. Here's McCarty with some room to skate. McCarty sees his room, takes it, throws himself into fifth gear before throwing the puck on the net. Easily deflected wide. Around the rink it goes. It finds the stick of J.D. White. J.D. White to Vandermoon. Vandermoon with a little bit of space, but wary of Duck's big hitter out here, Michael Luke. Here comes McBride one-on-one -on, -one on goal. Shoots, had space to shoot. Well stopped by Gilmore. And good work from Gilmore not to let a rebound out there. Yeah, that's that's the one thing we've seen from Jacob Gilmore a little bit so far in these uh, first three games of the I-5 Cup. He's been good, almost as good as Danny Cockrell in that. But he's let a little bit more rebounds out. And Patrick Scarlotta and company were able to, particularly in the Washington games up in Seattle, were able to convert on a couple of those rebound opportunities. None going there that time. No four to one edge on shots for the Ducks so far. We want to apologize for those of you out there watching that are having some problems with our stream. We have uh, we have decided it is because we are streaming in higher definition at intermission. We are going to temporarily go 
we're going to go off air and we're going to fix that problem, bringing quality down to 720 to increase and enhance your viewing experience. Here are the Ducks with Michael Luke with his first big hit of the game, and it is clean. Here's Abate. Abate ringing around the net into the slot. It was Pat Taylor, though. The puck did not end up there. Thrown on net from the point by Stankovic. A weak shot. Never had a chance of making its way through. Now with speed is Bartlett. Bartlett just pushed aside by some ducks as Abate comes out with it. Tries to find, tries to find Pat Taylor, who does not get his stick on the puck. Goes the length of the ice. Scarlotta throws a body in there on Bartlett. Pass from Remedios up the boards. Only finds the stick of Halverson. Three on two opportunity, but it was not to be as the Duck skaters were not quite able to get their sticks on the puck. Here's Dan Solitzer. Now with his top line mates, Alex and Stephen Casey out there. Minkoff also there for the Huskies. Stuck Dan Solitzer. Just stick lifted number nine on the Huskies. Alex Black, that's something we saw in Seattle, and Dan Solitzer was penalized for it. Hopefully, he does not get stuck up in those not quite legal plays here tonight. Here are the Huskies. Well, it's a legal play as long as you don't stick lift so much that your man, that the man loses control of the stick. And I think the bigger reason he was called for it in Seattle is it was a clear frustration move. He was knocking the stick of a man that didn't even have the puck. When the guy has the puck, it's a totally legal play. Uh, otherwise, it is a little bit more of a gray area there. Puck still in the Oregon zone. Well handled by Halverson, who creates a three on two. Thanks to his good skating and his good handwork, throws a shot on net. Well covered by Gilmore, who hasn't let too many rebounds out tonight. No, he's been he's been a vacuum tonight, and that's good. That's good to see from him. He didn't have much of a chance, I think, on the Ducks goal. It was a great deflection in front from Stephen Casey. And as a result, Oregon leads 1-0. They have the 5-2 edge as well on shots on goal. And hey, almost seven minutes into the game, no penalties on the Ducks. That's always good to see as well. We want to remind all of you at home, if you are having internet troubles, please try to plug into an ethernet source uh, off of Wi-Fi. A big hit by McCarty into the boards. That one must have felt good for the senior for the Ducks. Burgess, and as you would say, it was clean. It was clean. Burgess absorbed his own hit from number 10 on the Huskies. Kyle Umlaf did well to keep Burgess on his feet there. Here comes junior Jesse Leonard. Chips it forward and deep. Anyways, sorry folks, we do suggest that you plug into an Ethernet source if you are running into some, some lag issues with the stream. And if you don't have an Internet source, we will be decreasing our quality to 720 at the first intermission. For now, here are the Huskies trying to break free of their own defensive zone as Michael Luke drops yet another Husky. Stankovic now on the puck. Stankovic throws it forward to Nick Cool. Love to throw a GoPro on Michael Luke at some point, have a uh, Michael Luke hit cam. Absolutely, maybe sometime soon. I'm worried about the GoPro though, if that's the case. Yeah, I think you'd be worried about a lot of things if that was the case, but it would it would look cool. <laughs> be maybe an expensive investment, but... Abate now out here with Pat Taylor and Patrick Scarlotta. The Pat line, it could be called. Two Pats out there right now. And Scarlotta tries to clear it by ringing it around his own boards, but went directly up into the netting. The faceoff will stay here in the Oregon zone. And some uh, chirping there between Chris Stankovic and a Husky. I think it was number 10 in white, Kyle Umlauf. If you are going to see a fight in the Pac-8, this would be the game. It, it does come with a mandatory suspension, but this is the last game of the Pac-8 season for, uh, for, for Oregon. They have some games against College of the Canyons coming up, so uh, we'll see. Maybe some fisticuffs coming later. Stankovic with the puck behind Danny Cockrell. Scarlotta now with a little space to skate, chips it forward to Abate. Abate tried to leave it for Pat Taylor, who almost touches the puck offsides. Gaster now with it for the Huskies. Finds Vandermoon, who chips it in while absorbing a hit from Stankovic, who goes for a change. Halverson now, space to skate. 
He's a big body and he has some wheels on him and some good hands all around well-rounded player for the Ducks wearing the C on his sweater as we've mentioned. Here is Corey James with speed who finds Minkoff. Minkoff tried to go short side on Cockrell under that under that right blocker but never had a chance to find the net as it deflected high and wide behind. Doesn't seem like the Huskies really have an area they want to attack Cockrell on. The goals they scored in Washington, many of them came on that rush from Ryan Minkoff, and he was able to kind of go low to the leg side, low to the uh, right leg side. But other, it wasn't real. Other than that, it's not like they're trying to get at a particular angle on Cockrell. He's certainly a hard dude to solve. Here comes Casey with a little bit of space, well defended by Bartlett, but there is a whistle. I'm not sure if that was the whistle for Gilmore's save or if there's a penalty on the play. I believe it was just being blown dead. A reminder, folks, I don't think anyone actually had time to uh, take a guess at the first goal scorer, unless they did it on the social stream before Stephen Casey uh, knocked that one in. If you do want to take a guess as who gets the first Oregon penalty of the night, Go ahead and hit us up on Twitter, and we'll get a prize for the winner if someone gets it right. Dan Solitzer leaves it for Alex Solitzer. Alex now on the right wing here for the Ducks. Casey, sorry, Halverson keeps it alive, and in the process, absolutely decimates Alex Black, and will get the penalty for it. So there is your. So there we go. Okay. Right there. Tyler Halverson here, two minutes, first penalty for the Ducks. The captain will sit, and here is the first University of Washington power play. And interference, the call on that one. They hit a little bit off the play, according to Alice Kaplarovsky, the head ref tonight. So Tyler Halverson, the big dude for the Ducks, sits down for two minutes, and hey, it's not Michael Luke. I would have been wrong. Gasser unleashes a shot. Cockrell, not quite sure where it was, but his glove ends up on top, and we will have another face-off in a circle in the Oregon zone. So an early shot on that power play for Washington. They'll try and be a little more productive than they were last night as they had, I think, 25 minutes on the power play last night, weren't able to put one in. Here's Michael Luke, chips it forward to Alex Solitzer, who kicks it. Great awareness by Alex Solitzer, kicked it forward for Dan Solitzer, still on the chase as Alex, not making it easy for Corey James. Corey James, though, is a quick skater, got him in trouble when Michael Luke caught him with his head down last week in Seattle. James, though, coast-to-coast -coast effort stopped by Danny Cockrell. It remains 1-0 here. Ducks lead. 127 here to go in the Huskies' power play. Want to send a thank you to uh, the Minkoff family. Not a duck, not a duck family, but a Husky family, and always nice to be able to bring the games to both sets of fan bases. And the Minkoffs watching from Minnesota, they say it's five degrees outside and snowing, so maybe we shouldn't complain about the temperature inside the uh, ice arena here too much. Here is Minkoff. Now finds his defenseman on the line. Andrew Johnson, who wasn't able to keep it in. Here's Gasser, who's played so well. Gasser tripped up by McBride. McCarty finds McBride, who backhand effort is blocked by the blocker of Gilmore. Great save. Andrew Johnson now forward to Minkoff. Minkoff, toe drag, spins, and into the glove of Danny Cockrell. Danny Cockrell has been called to the task here tonight. Yeah, he has. That's... Uh that's the fifth shot Cockerell has faced already. And three of them coming on this power play, but Oregon also with a shorthanded effort on this power play, and that's something we saw from them a few times last night with some great shorthanded efforts. None of them have resulted in a goal, but neither did the power play for Washington yesterday. Stankovic sitting on the puck for a minute, stands back up. Michael Luke, his teammate out there for this PK. Pat Taylor and Dylan Abate on offense here for the Ducks as they look to kill off the remaining 30 seconds of this power play. 9.22 here left to go in the first period at the Lane County Ice Center. Good play by Luke to sidestep a Husky four check. Here is Bartlett who finds Kowchek. Remedios now. Remedios to Vandermoon, whose shot deflected off of Abate. Bartlett let his own shot go on net and now almost put in on the open net on the rebound. Umlauf looked to send it. Halverson, refresh out of the box, chases down the wayward puck. Not quite able to get there and goes for a change immediately. 
Strong effort, though, on that power play for the Huskies. Five shots in the two minutes Tyler Halverson was in the box. Danny Cockerell equal to all of them, and that brings us to a 8-7 uh, to seven shots on goal match here with the Ducks with the slight edge, but certainly a little bit more even than that was before that penalty was taken. Stephen Casey took a little spill, lost an edge on his skates, went head first in the board. He stands right back up. He looks okay. Right now, Jesse Leonard out there with Taryn Donnelly. The line's a little bit off due to that Tyler Halverson penalty. Now here come the Huskies with some space. Alex Black did not get his stick on it, though. Minkoff, who can create space for himself, centers it over to his teammate. That was Corey James had Danny Cockerell beat, but wasn't, didn't quite get the shot on net. Yeah, he had the frame of the goal beat, too. Another penalty coming up. And Looks Dan like Solitzer. Indicated. Dan Solitzer gives a little shove to the ref out of frustration. Nothing more comes from it. He will sit for two in the box. Familiar faces so far, Isaac, in the Oregon box. No penalties yet for the Huskies. 1-0 on the board, 7.50 here to go. Yeah, and that was the story last night, too. The parade, as we've mentioned, I've been fond of that word. Two penalty box for Oregon and Washington able to play a little more disciplined game, and they have to. We talked about this last night, Washington with the shorter bench, and when you have fewer players available, you need everybody to uh, to be able to be out there at all times. You can't take those penalties maybe, maybe that you have the luxury of taking when you have a bigger bench. McBride does well to keep the puck amidst four Husky defenders. Finds Halverson. Halverson who chips it up and came over in our direction. I had a moment of fright there, but we are safe. A note about the clock you might see on our broadcast. We just want to let you know that's a unofficial clock. At times it might get a second or two off from the <laughs> game clock. Maybe the, more uh, than a second or two. Maybe more than a times. second or two, depending on how asleep at the switch the folks in the scorer's box are. So we'll try and get it corrected if it does get off. But uh, at least you have a little, more, little bit of an idea of where we are at in the period, more so than we did before. Now Halverson works to keep the puck alive in the zone. Finds McBride, who did well to get a shot on net. Pressure from Alex Bla Andrew Johnson, rather, for the Huskies. Here he is, Johnson, with space to skate. Still on the power play, the Huskies are. Hip check from Halverson was a little mistimed, and the Huskies still with the puck. Corey James finds Minkoff. Minkoff back to Corey James. Minkoff again with the puck. On net, deflected by the blocker of Danny Cockrell. Hand up from the referee. We will go five on three here for about a minute as soon as the ref there fell asleep and he had his hands up and puck went back to the Ducks. Everyone looked around and whistle came late, but penalty on the Ducks. Captain Tyler Halverson will take another seat alongside his teammate Dan Solitzer. Isaac, this is, a, this is a trend we saw last week. A lot of Oregon Duck penalties early and it proved to be their demise there in the first game in Seattle as they went on to lose and now we're seeing a lot of penalties starting to stack up early. What are we to make of it? Yeah, well, especially the five on three guy has to really have you worried. I mean, you can do, you can only do so much when, uh, when you've only got three skaters out there and what haunted the Ducks when they went down to three skaters against the Huskies earlier was rebounds. They could get in passing lanes and shooting lanes fine, but when a puck did come on, uh, did go towards Cockrell, they weren't able to get a guy on the uh, on the rebound opportunity. We'll see if that comes into play. As Gasser collects the puck behind his own net, we want to thank Dylan Lee, the, our producer here, for working so hard to make our broadcast look good, and he figured out a way to get this clock running for us. It's not quite as simple as it may seem. Uh, there are There's some coding involved, and thank you for getting that done. A big hit from Michael Luke, though the big body 6'3 of Andrew, 6'4 of Andrew Johnson stood it up well as a puck goes on that on Cockrell, who had his post well covered behind. Locked up in some skates, Minkoff comes out with it. Gasser. Gasser to Johnson. 
Back to Gasser, back to Johnson. Johnson again now after his shot is deflected wide. Brings it around to Minkoff. Dan Solitzer about to come out of the box here for Oregon. Three seconds left remaining in this power play. Shot on net and it's a goal from Andrew Johnson. He looked up, he saw the opening, got it right over the blocker of Danny Cockrell. Couldn't have been much better than that. Not much Cockrell could do about that. Just went right over his blocker, found its home in the top left corner of the net. Dropped down. We have a 1-1 game here. One minute left to go on this power play. It is yet to be seen whether whether, oh, now it looks like Halverson is out of the box, although he's skating back in. Seems like Dan Solitzer's penalty had ended, which would mean Halverson would be out of the box. Kasparovsky, though, having a word with the scorekeepers. Yeah, and with the, the, the second exactly that that puck went in, this is where you'd like to be able to have a replay with an official clock. Uh, if it had an NHL game, they might have to take a look at that because if it went in one second earlier, there'd still be a minute left of power play time for the Huskies. I think, though, that the uh, Solitzer penalty had just expired, which would mean that that goal was just a five-on-four goal, even though it was very much created by the five-on-three opportunity that Washington had. Speaking of replays, uh, we here are self-funded and trying to keep a revenue stream coming in to keep our broadcast alive. Something we haven't talked much about is we actually get charged for ad-free viewer hours, so you not seeing ads from Ustream at home is about 50 cents per viewer hour for us. So over the last few games, we've racked up about a $150 tab for bringing our games here uh, ad-free and live to you at home. So we do ask that if you are able to, you donate to Oregon Hockey. You can do that at UO Found Foundation. We will be sending. We're putting up a link for that at intermission. Uh, you can direct your donation directly to the Oregon Hockey Broadcast Department if you write in the additional gift instructions. You, it should be pretty clear when you're there. If you need any help, feel free to contact us on any of our platforms. We're happy to help you donate. Any money that you have will help us with a keep our broadcast going and keep it coming to you free, ad free, and high quality on UStream. Here's Corey James with the puck, or Keenan Smith, sorry, Corey James rings it around for Washington, finds Vandermoon, Vandermoon on the net, gloved down by Cockrell. Minkoff getting in some words with Dan Solitzer. Always a chirpy affair between these two teams. One of the things you'll notice if you uh, follow the Oregon football team maybe is they'll tell you they don't have any rivals and they'll try and, which no one believes, but you know, they'll say every game is the Super Bowl for them, every game is a big game. Oregon and Washington will be very willing to sit down and tell you just how much they hate the, uh, hate the other team when it comes to hockey. You are correct, Heron Donnelly looking to win the puck against Vandermoon does. McCarty now with McBride, these two veterans on the Ducks. McBride sends it forward into the open space in front of McCarty, not quite quick enough to redirect that into the net, though the Ducks still fighting for possession. Halverson just shoving Vandermoon, trying to create some space. Hey, Vandermoon does well to stay on his skates against the significantly bigger Tyler Halverson. Nick Cool, who hasn't gotten much ice time here for the Ducks, as he is not did not make the first leg of this trip, but some ice time he is getting tonight. Does well to keep the puck alive, making an impact right off the bat. Nick Cool, Halverson now collects the puck. Finds McBride, McBride with some space, dangles! What a move by McBride, who shoots into the glove of Gilmore. Thank you for tuning in with us here on Ustream. And once again, we apologize for any quality issues you're running into. We will solve those, hopefully solve those for you at intermission. Though we do suggest that you always plug into a direct Ethernet source, Internet source, if you are able to. 13-10, the shots on goal advantage now for Washington. The five on three had a lot to do with that. Leonard throws one on net, bounced off the legs of Patrick Scarlotta and wide. Scarlotta now working behind the net against Gasser. Gets the, the better of him, but they both go tumbling after Abate came in there hard. Now some pushing and shoving from both teams. Well kept in the zone by Brock Burgess. He has been playing spectacular over these past two games. Another good effort there. Didn't really lead to anything, but you need to see that kind of effort from the Ducks. Scarlotta working, turns it over to the big Keenan Smith. Keenan Smith on net, blockered wide by Cockrell to the stick of Jesse Leonard who chips it forward and deep collected by Andrew Johnson. Gasser now, Scarlotta on him, 
hit comes from Scarlotta. Nothing too bad to it. Scarlotta checks up as Burgess enters the zone. Slap shot fanned on it a little bit. Behind the net it goes. Now Keenan Smith looks up and finds number 14, Bram Bat. Pat Taylor gets it for the Ducks. Sidesteps a hit that came in from Bram Bat. Stephen Casey now with the first line for the Ducks. Leonard was lining up a hit on, on Keenan Smith, but the puck didn't even come anywhere close. Nicely done by Leonard to pull up there because uh, that was right in front of an official. Certainly would have made the call had he made contact. Cockrell leaves the puck for Leonard. Finds Michael Luke. Michael Luke, who's already had a big hit tonight. Never afraid to use his body. And we do apologize. We meant to bring you a highlight reel of our past few games, including last night. But technical difficulties usually... Almost a goal there from the Ducks. Sorry. Technical difficulties... Uh, are always an issue and our memory card was actually wiped of all of our content so if you do want to go back and look at some of the, the past footage we have some games posted on Ustream but many uh, some of the games from last week are broken up into little bits because of the internet inaccessibility so our game from last night is on Ustream feel free to watch it there we will not be able to bring you many highlights from those games it's something we will be working on for next season to bring you a more well-rounded broadcast Michael Luke does, wins the race he does win the race against Corey James and the puck will go the length of the ice face off in front of Gilmore and again here because of the icing Washington not, not able to change Oregon however is and they'll bring a fresh unit out there so some fresh legs out there for the Ducks with 2.23 left in this opening period of play on the uh, official clock Tyler Halverson among them here comes the Huskies, now Minkoff with speed, always dangerous when he kicks it into fifth gear. Dan Solitzer, though, is not ready to let him get by so easy as the puck almost finds its way past Cockrell's left skate. Did well to keep it wide. Taryn Donnelly with the puck. Looks up to Dan Solitzer, who I think was in a little bit of a war of words with Minkoff. Minkoff never really wanted to get caught up in in the drama in the games, but Dan Solitzer may be getting to him a little bit here. Minkoff throws it towards the net. I think Minkoff's getting to Solitzer as much as Solitzer is getting to Minkoff. I don't know if you saw that, but Solitzer got away with a little bit of a love tap there on Ryan Minkoff. Uh, no call made, not enough for a slash, but he certainly got uh, a little bit of a stick there to the backside of Ryan Minkoff away from the play. 134 here to go in the first period. Danny Cockrell having a good game in net for the Ducks, as is Gilmore for the Huskies. We want to thank all the fans for coming out here. They can't hear us, obviously. They're sitting in the Lane County Ice Center here, but good turnout for the Ducks. Last legit game of the season against against the Huskies in the I-5 Cup. Tonight will be the deciding game who will take home the silver trophy. We'll show you what that trophy looks like in a few minutes at intermission. And just to remind you, we are going to shut down the broadcast and bring it back in 720 um, quality. So maybe those of you spread more thin around the nation are able to watch in a great play by the Solitzer brothers. Doesn't quite end up in a goal. We've seen some great passing combinations from Oregon already. Alex with space to shoot does. Almost kicked in. Covered though by Gilmore as Casey is hit into the net. That's Alex Solitzer does not like it. Stick goes high up in Andrew Johnson. War of words now. A little brawl starting with Dan Solitzer and Gasser. I didn't see which Husky it was, but somebody came in clear on an Oregon Duck right in the back after the play. And that was Casey who ended up in the net. Dan Solitzer and Alex Solitzer, they're always there to back up their teammates and protect them. It does get them in trouble. They do end up in the box, but it is important to have people on your team that will stand up for you and will make sure the tables are Yeah, even. and the danger there is that only the retaliation very often is called. It looks like we're going to get one to the box from each team here. So a little bit of uh, four on four, or they might just throw five skaters out there from each team and have this as uh, some coincidental minors. High sticking called for Alex Solitzer. At a roughing to uh, 
Andrew Johnson with the roughing call. Number 12 in there for the Husky 66. Two top liners for the Ducks and the Huskies. Michael Luke out there now with Stankovic for the Ducks. Nick Cool, McBride, and McCarty. Looks like we will be skating five on five. No, Nick Cool going to the bench. It will be four on four. Some open ice opportunities here. Two minutes shows on the clock for both teams. One minute, nine seconds left to go, so contingent on a goal. We will spill over into the next period, playing four on four. Well, even with the goal, actually, since they're at four on four, they'll, they'll both strength. stay in the box. They're at even strength goal, so Thank we'll have a penalty. Uh, Michael Luke almost with the puck on net, though. Goes wide, McCarty working on the puck. Washington comes out with the puck. Remedios ships it forward to James. James with his head down. Michael Luke just waiting to pounce, and he does. And what a big hit. And it's clean by Luke. Michael Luke now just chips it forward. McBride there just waiting in. He will beat the whistle after icing, and his arms go up. I think that was a missed call by the ref. He did win possession to that puck. Clearly going to be the first skater there. Ref now signaling that the puck is going to be... We might see, they might take this to center. They, uh, they'll do that kind of as a compromise. Sometimes it's hybrid icing again. Just creates so much confusion, and uh, it, it's one of my least favorite rules. I think I'd either like to just see touch-up icing or no-touch icing, and they are in, in, indeed going to come out and take the face-off here at center ice with 35 ticks remaining in the first period. 125 left to go on those power plays. Nick Cool in for the Ducks. Looking to make his impact after sitting a few games out. Here is Tyler Halverson who finds Nick Cool. Nick Cool looks to dangle his way into the net. I probably don't need to remind you folks that Nick Cool is a high impact player for the Ducks. He has a lot of talent and hasn't played quite as many games as maybe his teammates would have hoped so far this season. But he is here for the Ducks tonight. We'll look to see how his, how his participation in this game affects them. Remedios now with time and space looks to run down the clock five seconds left to go spins away from cool three two one that will be the period folks we're going to step away briefly we will be we will be back sorry with a pregame show in about two minutes first, the scoring 